Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be having a quick look at how to load slash performance test your application with JMeter. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So JMeter is a open source application written in Java and like I said earlier, it's um, designed to load test and measure performance of your application. So typically what you're going to do with it is you're going to simulate heavy loads um, using multiple threads, which kind of represent multiple users. Uh, and you're going to simulate that heavy load onto your server, onto your backend, onto your database, whatever it is that you're trying to test uh, and just analyze the performance, see how it goes. So in my scenario just now, I'm working on a project where I want to make sure that one of our APIs that, that does a bit of uh, you know relatively heavy computation is staying relatively quick um, and can handle a uh, large amount of concurrent uh, users basically at the, at the same time. And we have some kind of rough estimates of numbers for, for the amount of users. So as we're working and adding different features onto that, we want to make sure it doesn't um, you know, rise above certain thresholds. So what we might do is use something like JMeter to perform um, analysis every time we, you know, raise a merge request uh, to, to the code base. And then that will, you know, spit out the report and then we can just make sure that we've not added too much time onto the request, for example. So um, in terms of what you can do, uh, the main thing I use it for is, you know, very simple, send HTTP requests to a, a backend server and just basically see how long it takes that's the majority uh, of the time and yeah you can have a quick look at uh, the documentation here to see the other kind of things it's doing um there's one other couple other things worth mentioning which is of course you can you know create plugins you can view existing plugins if you want to do you know more more complex features for the most part i'm keeping it very very simple um and it does support uh, kind of distributed tests uh, which i'm not going to go into today i usually just run this either from from one server or just on my local machine just to make sure that it all works fine so um, yeah, that's what JMeter is. Let's get right into the demo. So to get started, you just want to head over to the JMeter website, um, head over to download and download releases, and you can just download the binaries straight from there and just add them to your path. And hopefully that should um, that should be enough to, to get you started. Also, if you're a Mac, you can use Homebrew as well to, to download this. So once you have that, we can get started with JMeter. So I've got an empty project right here. And the only one thing I've added is this hello service, which is just a um, Deno REST API, and it's doing absolutely nothing complicated. All it's doing is some sort of heavy computation, which is in my case, just looping over, what's that, is that a billion? And um, just to add a bit of time onto the request so it's not too fast. And um, you can run that using, uh, it's just deno run, uh, allow all net, and then point to the hello service file. So I'm just running that in the background and all that does, if I just head over to this browser here and refresh, it's just gonna return hello world. And you can see that it takes roughly um, just under 300 milliseconds to, to run that request. So this is just for testing. Obviously this would be your, your backend service. Um, and yeah, to, to actually get started with the kind of JMeter IDE, you just hit JMeter on the command line and you hit enter. So this will open up the JMeter IDE that I've mentioned. Um, if you also check the command line, um, you'll see kind of a little message here that just reminds you don't use this for the load testing. So you want to use the IDE just for creating the test plans and maybe debugging things. But when it comes to actually running the, uh, the load testing, you're best off using um, the, the command line directly. So let's just bring this uh, into view and we'll have a quick look at how to use it. So the ID itself, um, on the left pane here, you're gonna be dealing with kind of a, a tree structure of components and these components are gonna be the, the things that make up your test. And usually when you click on one of these components, on the right hand side here, you'll have the view that can kind of configure and set up the, um, the component that's selected. Uh, and then you have your kind of standard menus for you know opening, saving, etc. Uh, at the top here. So uh, to start off, we're just going to start off with you know a basic test plan. So I'm just going to call this, uh, I guess, JMeter uh, tutorial. It's not really too relevant. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to go over every single option. Most of them are quite you know self-explanatory. Um, and I think the ones I will go over are the ones that I use, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. If I don't go over it, it probably means I either don't know what it does um, or I don't really uh, don't really need it. But uh, everything you can find on their documentation, which I'll link in the description below if you want to kind of look into something else further. So um, the first thing you usually you're going to do is you're going to right click and add. And this is where you get all your different, you know, uh, elements, configuration, things, etc. So most of these will be quite familiar. You'll notice that you're only ever going to use, you know, a quite a small subset of this. Um, almost all the time, you're going to start off with threads, i.e. the number of users, and you can start off with a thread group. So this is um, some sort of user group, some user group, and this basically simulates the number of users and the frequency in which they're going to be sending requests to whatever um, backend that you want. So in this case, the action here 
to be taken after a sample error. I'm just going to keep it at continue. We don't want you know to deviate. If there's an error, we just want to continue going because some users might have errors. And then these three values are quite important, which is basically the number of users. So this is literally the number of threads users. Of course, this may be um, limited or affected by your underlying hardware. So there's you know it's a number to play around with. Uh, in this case, for example, there's just going to be one user, and I'll keep it at one user for now, just so we can basically test that our request is going to work. And then later on, once we make sure everything's working, we can start increasing that number. Um, the ramp up period is basically the, the amount of time you want to um, you know spawn these threads. So if we have 10 users um, over a ramp up period of 10 seconds, that basically says, you know, every one second, um, spin up one thread, i.e. 10 threads over a 10 second period of time. So it just splits them in between. If I have this 10 and one, it just means within one second, so one divided by 10, every, I think that's 100 milliseconds, um, spawn a new thread. Uh, and that's how that works. And then the final uh, number here is the loop count. How often do you want to do this? So if you want to simulate just a, a server that's constantly under heavy load, you might want to do infinite, um, you know, run it and just, you know, monitor it over time and see how it handles it. You might say, okay, well, I want, you know, the ramp up period 10 every second. I want this to run for 60 seconds, um, you know, a short period of time, a short burst. You can play around with these numbers and see how that goes. For now, I'm just going to keep them all at one um, uh, and uh, just do some basic testing there. So let's start off with a simple HTTP request. So um, most of the time now I'm going to be within this thread group here. So I'm just going to right click again, I'm going to add and um, a sampler is basically something that does an, an action. So that's what we're going to jump into now, a sampler. And you have all you know your different types of samplers here. I'm going to pick the HTTP request. Most of the time, this is the only one um, I'm going to be using. And when you have the HTTP request, again, you're just going to pop in the details for your uh, server. So localhost by default is HTTP and uh, port number 8002. It's a get request. I don't have any path. Um, I don't have any you know additional body data request headers, etc. So I'm just going to keep it at that. And you know, to test out locally, you just hit this play button here. So I'm hitting this play button here and it's going to ask you to, yeah, for the first time, it's going to ask you to save it. So I'm going to hit save and I will just rename this to JMeter tutorial and it's a JMX file. I'm just going to save it within the, the repo itself. This repo will also be available on GitHub. Uh, I'll pop that in the description below if you want to have a look. So now that we've got this request again, I'm going to hit play and you'll see that that's, you know, that's not really done anything here, um, but we know that it, it has actually performed a request. I can click on this little icon at the top right to see the logs. And if we were you know, to look at the logs, we can see that it started uh, a thread, finished the thread, um, and it notifying the, the test listener. We don't have anything set up to basically listen or to, to, to give us a report. So let's quickly add that so we can actually see uh, the results of the HTTP request itself. So uh, I'm going to right click um, and You'll notice here that I'm, I'm right clicking on the HTTP request uh, because I've only got one thread group and one request. I can add the listeners um, to either place. The way the listeners work, um, the listeners basically are going to listen up to the results of your requests and generate some sort of report. And they will typically generate a report within the same level and maybe anything below them. Uh, so in here, it doesn't really matter because I've got one request, but uh, just something to keep in mind if you have multiple HTTP requests going on. So I'm going to right click and add a listener. And in this case, I'm going to add two listeners. One is the result tree, and I'm going to add a second one, which is the summary report. So they do slightly different things. The result tree is quite good for, for debugging. So if I hit the request again, you're going to see a new HTTP request within the result tree. And this is that first request, and it's just going to show me all the request response data, etc. So I can look at the request. I can look at the, you know, the, the headers. I can look at the response data. I can see that it's, you know, hello world. I can see response headers. Um, and that'll just every request I put in here, it's just going to come up and there's another entry. Um, so this is quite nice for debugging. Typically, I think it's recommended to um, not keep this here because it actually takes up quite a lot of, I think it takes up a lot of memory um, or it might slow down your, your tests. So, but definitely good for, for debugging. Um, the one that's more commonly used is a summary report. And this is basically a summary of all the number of requests that you've made. And it kind of averages out uh, some of the details, like um, for the most part here, it's the, the duration of the request. So you can see I've made two requests. If I add a third one there. The minimum time is you know here, the maximum time and the, the average. Um, and you can see the number of errors, the throughput, etc. And um, I think you can configure this to add some more data, but this is usually enough for, for my use case. So now that we've got a very simple kind of HTTP request, we're going to look into uh, a few other kind of configuration items that I would usually use and you know, something that's properly useful. And then we'll just um, use the command line and just see the, the final output. So um, one thing that's usually useful if you've got multiple requests is to add a um, 
a config element. So a configuration element is something that usually helps your, your test yourself. Usually a, a data set config, which is if you've got kind of an input file as a CSV, might be useful. Um, uh, in this case, I'm going to show you so, a couple of the HTTP ones. So you have something called HTTP request defaults, which basically says for any HTTP request within this uh, thread group, use these kind of um, top level defaults. So I can say localhost 8002, and you might you know put in your root path, etc. Um, this is basically just abstracting away the need to you know pop this in here. That's all that's doing. So I can now within this HTTP request, it's going to inherit the um, the defaults from the, the parent. So that's you know something that can be quite useful. Um, and also uh, another thing that you might want to do is add things like headers. Uh, so we can add a, another config element, um, headers, cookies. You know you've got it all here. So let's add a yeah let's add a header. So I'll pop the header up here, and um, within the header I'm just going to click add. I'm going to close the logs over here. And you might, for example, do an authorization um, authorization header with you know uh, bearer and you know some token. So if we now run the HTTP request and head over to the results tree and look at our most recent request, um, let's go to request and request headers. We can see that we have the authorization, we have that bearer some token. So that's come through. Um, but sometimes what you want to do is you want to, of course, inject uh, inject these from an environment variable. Um, basically because you want to test different variations, especially on, on CI, etc. So the, the way you do this is you can use some built-in functions with JMeter to, to read, basically read properties um, and uh, in, inject that value. So you can use this syntax here, which is dollar sign and these curly brackets. I think you can use it pretty much anywhere you have normal values. For example, in the start when we're doing thread groups, um, you might want to replace that with a variable so that you can test different numbers um, of users uh, for each different test. And there's some built-in functions, which I'll link to in the description below. One of the ones is underscore underscore, uh, and I think it's capital P for property. And then you just pass in a, a, a defined key. So I'm gonna do, um, let's call this auth token. And of course, this doesn't exist yet. So if I run this here and I head over to the, the results tree, that's just going to be one. I think one is just basically uh, the, the default return if it, if it doesn't find anything. So what we want to do actually is we want to restart JMeter in this case, but we want to pass in um, either a, a local property, a JMeter property or a, a Java property or an environment variable. So I'm going to move this to the side. Um, I'm going to control C uh, out of this. Oops, there we go. And I'm just going to run JMeter again, but this time I'm going to run hyphen J. I'm going to pass in my uh, header, which is, I think I called it auth token, um, some token here. And we're just going to run that again. Uh, the hyphen J is basically passing in a JMeter local property. Um, so let's bring this IDE back. And now uh, I can open my existing JMeter tutorial. And if I just run the request, Again, so I run it this time and I go to the summary results and I open this up, go to request, request headers. You can see that that has now been injected in from the uh, header manager as the as a token. So that's basically how you might um, inject variables and that's also how you might do HTTP headers. Cool. So the final thing that I think it's worth having a quick look at is assertions um, within the IDE. So assertion is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to do some sort of check and it will you know pass or fail your test. So if I head over to my HTTP request, um, I can add an assertions. And usually I'm only ever kind of dealing with a duration assertion, which we'll look into in a minute. But I think it could be quite useful for some people as well to do a response uh, assertion. But generally, I'd, I'd like to kind of recommend to keep it simple. Uh, if you want to do actual, you know, you want to check the, the response of your um, application and, you know, do those kind of checks that probably belongs in a different type of test. Um, but it might be worth just kind of sanity checking that you know you, you're getting a 200 or if you're using status codes in a slightly different way also might be worth checking those so um, i add a response assertion here and it's again pretty you know intuitive here you can assert on you know the the, the text response the data the response codes the messages etc so for example we can check the response code we can do the matching rules so i want the response code to equal to um, and then here you add the patterns to test so i want the response code equal to uh, 200 here, 200. Um, as long as it's 200, then I'm going to assume it's a you know successful test. If it's not, it's going to fail. So if I press play here and I head over to my results tree, the um, you know we can see it like normal. There's a green tick. Now if I go back and change that to, for example, 201, and I hit play again, we can see there's a failure. And under that failure is going to have uh, this response assertion failure, and it's going to tell you I expect it to see 200, but instead I saw 201. So that's how the response assertions work. 
Um, let me put that back to zero. And the more common one that I use is the duration assertion here. And I basically use this to see how many of my requests are you know, within a certain threshold, right? So um, for example here, let's put in roughly, um, I think 235 is somewhere in the middle, maybe 240. But so basically anything above this is gonna flag as, as failed. Um, I'm not gonna you know, fail my CI or anything. This is just to see a percentage of my requests that are hitting over that threshold. Um, and now if I hit, uh, if I go back to this results, I'm going to clear this and I'm just going to hit play. And we're just going to hit play a few times and see if any of them hit under. Um, they might not, I guess. So if I go back to my assertion, actually, let's go to the, the tree and let's just see how long each of these took. 273, 277, 272. Yeah, so it's roughly 270 actually. So we can, let's up this to 270 just now. Um, there we go. And I'll run it a few times again. And you'll see, there we go. So we have a few few success. This is 266. This one is 267. But the one below was, um, yeah, 280. So this one is quite useful. Uh, and if you go to the summary report here, you can see that altogether, um, I've been making, I think altogether, 16, um, 16 samples or 16 requests, of which quite a few of them have failed. Um, the rest in that path. So this is quite a good uh, way to basically check if you're hitting your thresholds. So I think that covers everything we want to look at on the IDE. So I'm just going to hit Command S. I'm going to make sure that I've saved this, and I'm just going to close this out. So that's it. We're done. We've made our um, we've made our test case. Um, and if you look at the the directory here, jamie-tutorial.jmx, that's the file. We can go into it, and it's just an XML file. Um, and you can go through and basically you should be able to kind of recognize the pattern. Um, of all the, the different uh, elements. So you have a tree, the tree has always got this, um, basically the, the item that would appear in your tree. So the very top one is the test plan. And then it's got basically the children next to it. So then we have another tree with the thread group. Then we have another tree with our, um, you know, uh, our HTTP headers, uh, our um, actual HTTP request, etc. And we go into that and we see everything. So everything is accessible from here. Uh, and everything is, you know, we can change any of these. So um, for example, the, the number of threads, we kept at one, let's change that to 10 over a um, 10 second period. So we'll change that for the for the UI test, uh, for the CLI test. So that's basically what the, the GEMX file, and this is something that you might typically check into your um, source, uh, source code. So let's go over to the um, command line. And if you remember, so let's just run this a second and I'll just control C out of it straight away. It gives you advice on how to, to run the test here uh, on non UI mode. So if I do JMeter, hyphen N just means non UI mode, i.e. CLI mode. Hyphen T is just um, basically specify the test file. We got hyphen L for the results file. So let's just call that uh, results. And I happen to know that this is a JTL file. Um, hyphen E is basically telling it to put all the output onto into a report. So basically output the reports and then you do hyphen O and you point it to a report folder, basically, where should I output the, um, the results? So if I do this, I hit enter, and we just give that a few up to 10 seconds. So there we go, that took roughly, you know, 10 seconds. And we can see here, usually this is going to spit out a summary. And that summary is just going to be the basically the duration uh, and the number of um, requests that failed. So this is the number of errors one. So because we've got the test assertion there, we know that one of our requests took over the requested time, the rest of them were absolutely fine. And here's the, the time. So that one that went over was obviously 297, the rest were under. Um, and that's it, most of the time I'm looking at this, but if you want kind of a more comprehensive view, what we can do, we can jump into the project. Now we should see this report directory. So if I jump into the index HTML, and let's just open that up on Chrome here um, on the right-hand side, and I'll just expand this. There we go. You can basically see a nice little report about the test result that you've just uh, performed. So we can see that's the 90, 10, the one failure. Um, we can see all the requests. We can maybe dig down into the error, and then we can, you know, jump into the charts. We can, you know, look at the response times. There's lots of different kind of graphics, etc., that you can have a quick look into. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail there because you can just have a, a play around with all of these and open up the different charts and seeing um, the results. Again, for me, most of the time, this right here is enough. Just get a rough idea of the performance. The only other thing worth knowing is, yeah, you have the the results file here, and this is basically a line for all 10 of our requests and it has you know the split the, the details for each one of those if you want to see them there and obviously you've got the log and um, i usually add a get ignore to to remove these i don't really need to, to see these because all of these are available elsewhere but um i think that's everything i wanted to cover in this video so thank you very much for watching have a good day and i'll see you in the next one